that all your students are operating out of their own movies. One, one person at the break said to me, you know what I really hope that I get to do? I really hope that I get to bring my students out of their shell. I really want to bring them out of their shell. I want them to communicate more. Well, part of the reason is because of their own movie. Who knows what's happened before? Maybe they were in a class where they were really scared from the teacher. I mean, we don't know. But we have to learn to enter into their movie and become part of it so that we can understand why they're anxious, why they're nervous, why they're angry. All right. But a lot of times, in our own movies, we forget everybody else and we do what we call misbehaving. Now, Adler advocated that there are four reasons that people choose to misbehave. Four reasons. I think this goes across the lifespan. I don't think it's just kids. And you're going to see a lot of this will, will be applicable, you know, for those of you who have been out on a playground, a lot of little kids will do this. As adults, we just find more complex ways to do the same thing. I'm not saying this answers every last misbehavior question, but what I am saying is this is a very good launching point to understand why kids misbehave. And the first is attention. I need attention. I only count when others see me. And what that means is, is that this is the child in your class who is probably the what? The class clown. Thank you, Rachel. Right? Everybody got a class clown? Everybody, that was me, by the way. Right? Everybody, and this is the kid, you know, who at 16 or at 18 or at 20 and at 5 is doing this. Look at me. Look at me. Look. Look. Are you looking? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I only count when others see me. In other words, I matter because you're paying attention to me. And so, how do I know if I'm dealing with this type of child or person? If you feel annoyed, irritated, or guilty, and you, the teacher, react by reminding, coaxing, doing things for the person they could do for themselves. So here I am trying to get your attention. And here you are, what is this like? Okay, so I just did this kid. You all have this kid in your head, right? You know this student. You know this student. How do you react to this student? And I'm not talking about, because these students are fun to have too, right? They have a tendency to maybe participate a little bit more. They have a tendency maybe to connect with you. A lot of times they have really good personalities. They're nice kids. But see, this is annoyed, irritated, worried, or guilty, right? So how do you act? What, are they, like, what does it do to you? What does it do to your lecture? What's that? It's disruptive. Right? You're right in the moment and they do something stupid or silly. And so you're like, ugh. Okay. React by reminding, coaxing, or doing things. This, this is the student that you perpetually have to remind. Did you bring your whatever? Don't forget to do this. And the response of the person is to stop temporar temporarily, but later resume the same or another distracting behavior. Stops when given one-on-one -on -one attention. So, like you said in your lecture, very disruptive, what do I have to do? I have to attend to the particular student. Okay? And they stop, don't they? For whatever reason. Well, I'll tell you why. Because the goal of misbehavior has been met. They've gotten what they wanted. They got your attention. Okay? So the belief, the reason they're acting this way is because I only count when I'm getting noticed or getting special service. I'm only important when I'm keeping you busy with me. That's the only time that I matter. Yesterday, um, I had the opportunity to go shopping um, in, um, I don't know what district I was in. I was down by the temple that was next to a very famous Indian temple in Singapore. Do you, okay, you know that area that I'm talking about? Yes, that's right. And we went into these little, and I was like the only white face there. And so for me, I love that. I just think that's so neat to be immersed in a separate culture. But uh, the person I was with was says, well, the reason you like it is because you like to be the center of attention. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Yeah, I guess maybe that is true. So I count because I'm getting noticed. So that's, you know, that's, so that's my goal in misbehavior. All right, so how do we get this person in our classrooms 
to stop this sort of aberrant behavior. Notice me and involve me. Put them into a good task. Let them know you care and spend time with them later. Avoid special service. Say it once, then act. A lot of my students, now I, it may be a little different here, and some of the other goals and misbehavior may fit better, but a lot of my students, I've got one student who's a graduate student, his name's Daniel. Daniel's 24. Daniel is diagnosed with attention disorder, hyperactive, hyperactivity, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. He's ADHD and he's the attention type. And so what he does, like through my class, is he'll sit back there where you're sitting, and I can't remember your name, I'm sorry. Jill? Oh, okay, I can remember that. Okay, and Jill, where Jill's sitting, and he'll text, like all through my lectures. This is a 24, 25 year old man, okay? So one of the things I have to do is when I lecture, I look back at him and I just kind of, you know, I kind of cock my head a little bit, and he'll stop. Because it's very distracting to the people around him. You know, he keeps getting texts, which, you know, I don't really care. I mean, I, I, he always gets A's on my exams. But those nonverbal signals work with him very well. This is a 25-year-old I'm doing this with. This isn't a 5-year-old. This isn't a 16-year-old. It's 25. Daniel wants attention, and I know that. I know that about him. All right, so there's your first one. This is the attentive kid. The second one ah, needs power. You know this kid, right? This is this kid. This is a kid that's up here like this. I'm in charge. Look at this. And it's metaphorically, right? Okay, not bad for 42. I didn't break anything. Okay. This is the kid who has to be in control. I only, I only count when others know what I do. How many of you have this kid? Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. This is, the, how do I know if I'm dealing with this type of person? When you feel angry, annoyed, challenged, or defeated. Now notice that annoyed is the same thing as the other one. So the challenge, defeated, and angry. There's a difference in terms of the scale of emotional reaction. Irritated is different than angry. And a lot of times the reason people, the reasons people feel angry at somebody is because they're being disrespected. That makes sense. So this is the kid who really challenges you and you react by fighting, giving in, or wanting to be right. We'll talk a lot more about that later. Okay. You know this kid. This kid really gets under your skin, right? Because he has, he, I, isn't that interesting that I made it gender specific? Because this kid has to uh, be in control. And a lot of times, at least in the States, these kids are usually male. Not always, not always, but a lot of times they're male. So, the response of you, the teacher, is to intensify behavior, to be defiant, to avoid compliance, and to feel that she or he has won when people are upset. They exercise passive power. Excuse me, not the response of the teacher, the response of the kid. They exercise passive power. They're defiant. Your kid, power kid. That's a power kid, whether he realizes it or not. Now, a lot of times, these kids that try to exercise power with you are kids that aren't getting it at home. And so they're usually the product of very strict, very stern parents. Not always, but a lot of times, okay? So the belief behind the behavior is, I belong only when I'm the boss and no one can boss me, okay? I am the boss. And again, it doesn't matter the age, it still happens this way. So how do you get this person involved? What do you do with the kid who has such a desire to be powerful, or the student, excuse me, let me help. Acknowledge you cannot make him or her do what you want. And a lot of times they just need to hear that. You know, Janice, there's nothing I can do here. I can't make you do what I want, but this is what I would like for you to do. Acknowledge that you as the teacher need help with something. These people need to see that you don't have it all under control. Now, I don't mean that means that you're flipping out and you're wigging out and you're upset about something, but it does mean that they would like to be able to help you. Always withdraw from conflict. Be firm and kind. Act, do not talk. Do decide what you will do and get help from the student to set the limits. When I mean this, include the student. Look, Janice, I can't control you, but I, I'm running a classroom here. I need some help. Tell me what you need. 